th there is another fra way of thinking that says no space time is fundamental you know relativity is fundamental um so yeah, I, the, i'm saying that because there's debate it's not it's not mo i think most physicists would say quantum mechanics is the underlying theory some kind of quantum description of nature it's on a roll out of that emerges it's, <laughs> it's on a roll time. for how successful it has been yeah in accounting for everything yeah right i mean yeah. so why doubt it at this point yeah so we maybe we don't know enough to start so so you i, I he i think i'm not misrepresenting him he would he would question whether you really need to have a quantum theory of gravity in the coming from quantum mechanics i think he would question that so it, the the reason I'm saying that is to say it's an open question. We don't know. So what about the fabric of space time? Ooh. Is that emergent? Well, so the recent work in the study of black holes, which is the the tiny bit of research I still do. I had a PhD student and postdoc working on this. It's called emergent space time. The, the yeah. Field. What is that? So it's the idea that space and time are not fundamental. So space time is not fundamental. There's a let's say a deeper description, which is basically a network of qubits to put, to do the shorthand, the shorthand version. So qubits, quantum bits. So essentially it looks like a quantum computer, not absolutely not to say that we live in a simulation, right? No one's going, He's a little defensive no one's there. Going that Did, have you noticed that? These sounded, I don't really mean I, that. I, I, do, well, no, I don't know whether we live in a simulation. <laughs> Nobody say, does, know. but I'm just saying it's not, it's not evidence for that. Right. Uh -huh. But it, it's beginning to look like you can say, well, a no, let's say a notion of distance can emerge from a network, an underlying network, which doesn't have the notion of distance or geometry in it. So that's the... That's, you just that's described subspace. From Star Trek. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> kind of. Possibly. Yeah, it's like this underlying substrate where the laws of physics aren't necessarily in play, which is why you can go faster than the speed of light. Well, information goes faster. Information yeah. goes faster. So they communicate in subspace with witty repartee. Exactly. Even though they're, even though they're like, a ga half a galaxy apart. Right. Yeah. Right. It's interesting. I, I was thinking about this in another context, actually, because I... It, so there would be laws of physics, by the way. The, 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 there'd be underlying laws. Right. And then our laws would emerge from them. Please right? forgive so in, my inelegant description. We call them effective <laughs> theories, right? So it's an effective theory right. um, which, is, which works uh, oh, in, like in the that. regimes we observe things. But, yeah, effective theory. But I was thinking about this, and I have no evidence for this at all. So I, I might cause lots of people to write in. But, but I think that the, that no, causality, for example cause and effect okay. which is what you're saying when things if things can go faster than light then you can essentially build a time machine and go into the past you can send messages back into the past if you can go faster than the speed of light basically my guess is that that's absolutely fundamental um and so that so you wouldn't just because you can skip if you could skip beneath relativity so so to a deeper picture of space time i still guess that causality will be there will still be there i i will be uh, well now wow. i i'm not aware of any anyone who's really who's proved that or i'm not aware but of any there, uh, any other anyone's opinion on it it is my opinion yeah uh, i don't have any i don't think i have any evidence for that other than uh, stephen hawking how is that different from stephen hawking's time travel conjecture yeah the cr chronology protection protection conjecture, conjecture sorry so it's yes. called a conjecture because he conjectured it <laughs> conjecture. <laughs> it was conjecture it was <laughs> and that was his conjecture you're right he said that whatever the underlying laws of physics are they, they have to prevent, prevent time travel into yeah. the past yeah. gotcha. which is is to say that causality protecting causality to. right exactly but yeah. i think we're absolutely miles away but we're miles away this might not be right this idea of space-time emerging although it's quite a popular research field mm -hmm. it, it is interesting because quantum mechanics can seem to violate the spirit of that so we you probably discussed before on the show quantum entanglement yeah yeah everybody wants these, to know about quantum entanglement Einstein loves it. Called it spooky action at a distance he called it mm -hmm. right so he didn't like the idea that you can have these widely separated things that can appear to be correlated in such a way that something happens instantly now, we know, John Bell and others uh, showed, and it's been experimentally tested, that information can't travel faster than the speed of light. Right. But still, the idea that some kind of, call it configuration, 
that the quantum state can change instantly seems to violate that somehow, uh, I, doesn't it? So th I, this is again. I heard from research. the other Brian. Brian, yeah, Green. Our Brian, other Brian, Green. Brian <laughs> so I was having lunch with him, and I just he said something that just blew my mind. The what might be fundamental in space time is this sea of entangled virtual particles, where the particles are entangled via what are essentially wormholes. Yeah. Because a wormhole has instantaneous contact from one side yeah. to the other. And the wormholes then are the stitching of the fabric mm. of yeah. space time. It's called ER equals EPR, which is Einstein Rosen equals Einstein Podolsky Rosen. So EPR is the spooky action at a distance okay. paper. And ER is Einstein Rosen, which is 1935, I think, wow. where, where they showed that the, the uh, Schwarzschild metric, <laughs> the eternal Schwarzschild metric, which is the description of a, the, the, a non-spinning black hole, which we discovered very early in relativity, um, has in it, if you extend it as far as you can, a, a wormhole geometry. So that was Einstein and Rosen. So it's called, I think Leonard Susskind coined the term ER equals EPR. So what does that mean to you as a thinker in this space? It, can, can wormholes be the fabric of anything? Yeah, it's part of the answer. One of the answers for how information might get out of a black hole. So uh, is, is what, uh, it's what is called the black hole information now, paradox. Okay, that's that's very cool. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, well, one of the one of the pictures people have for that very hand wavy picture is that wormholes somehow connect the interior of the black hole to the external universe. But all the other virtual particles that fill the vacuum of space, yeah, those are particle pairs that come in and out of existence. Yeah. They're entangled. Why wouldn't they be? They're entangled. Why wouldn't that also be in this wormhole discussion? Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So that's it. That's so. So it seems there's some sense of a, right. a link. The, the reason it's, it it came in 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 the black hole context is the math. People did very complicated mathematical mm -hmm. calculations about what happens to the Hawking radiation. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the the radiation that is emitted from a black hole. From the it, and it's really one way to think about it is it's the event horizon of a black hole is disrupting these particles that you talked about these entangled particles yeah. that are, that are really the structure of the vacuum of space right and it kind of disrupts them and so people were calculating how that radiation which is entangled with the black hole how everything behaves as the black hole shrinks because because if you think about it, this black hole is glowing it has a temperature losing energy through so, Hawking radiation through the Hawking radiation so not at the moment because they're much colder than the cosmic microwave background so they're, 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 they're cold things at the moment but eventually in the universe there'll be there'll be hot things and they'll start they'll shrink it'll be hotter than the background yeah so, yeah, so there'll be so net, that flow of energy is out yeah hot okay. is it I mean we're yeah. talking about right. <laughs> point no 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 whatever Kelvin it uh -huh. yeah. but eventually they'll shrink they're entangled with the Hawking radiation because of what you said, because of these pairs that are coming out of the vacuum. And so you get to a point where you get a crisis, really, where the entanglement can't be supported. It's one way of thinking about one of the problems with the black hole information paradox. So it's all to do with entanglement and what happens. And um, so from that research, some calculations were done, which are just mathematical, that say that ultimately the Hawking radiation ends up essentially entangled with itself again, right? It's one way to think about it. Um, be, because, so, so you don't lose information. Um, but those, those calculations can be pictured with hand waving as representing wormholes, some sort of wormholes. They're not the e Einstein-Rosen wormholes, actually. So it gets very complicated. And, and, and people aren't clear on the interpretation. But that's where it, the modern resurgence in this idea has come from. I think it's coming from these really very technical calculations about black holes and how information behaves in the, in the presence of black holes. And wormhole-like structures right. appear to be one interpretation of what's happening. But I sh I'm choosing my words carefully because it really isn't fully fleshed out by a long way. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Is it but it is it's, really it's fascinating to think about. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. This is how the, it's like an information tunnel just for that for the purposes of getting it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then it, you go, why? And, and, and even, you know, you see the language. It's like for the purposes of why is it that information is conserved? Right. That looks quite basic. So it looks like another of these basic ideas. Information is 
not destroyed. Right. It becomes massively scrambled, so you can't in any conceivable future read the stuff. But so, yeah. it's it, it, you know the example that's often given is if you if you burn. But you know, it's the iPad. Let's say you set fire to the iPad. You might say, well, surely I destroy the memory. But the, the idea is that you don't, if you could measure everything that came off somehow, right. all the photons and everything, every, the whole thing, then in there, scrambled up, the, the, you could reconstruct. You would, you would, the, the, would the be thing. the iPad, even though you yeah. set it on fire and all those atoms like, yeah. and every particle that was in there. If you could get them all together... You, you would be able to say, oh, that was the iPad. Yeah, and you'd have the, your photos in there, whatever it is. You know, you could, in very principle, but really in principle, not practice, reconstruct. So you wow. don't destroy information. Yeah, you don't destroy information. It's also determinism. So. It's also, it's called unitary evolution in our <laughs> language, right? Really? You don't, you don't destroy information. Gotcha. So, so that, en that energy and fun, information, right? conservation of energy, conservation of information, is, is, can we think about them like that, or is it not? Is that a wrong way to think about it? I well, mean, it's, it's less about information, more about entropy, right? I mean, entropy you can move from one place to another, and then there's a then you can measure that or think about it as an entity. Whereas, okay, I get. I mean, that. a point we we're raising before. Obviously, if I send a molecule that has structure, a DNA molecule, into a black hole and it gets ripped apart, and then it comes out as separate atoms. I lost all that DNA information. However, that DNA became DNA at the expense of the sun or whatever other what input yeah. oh, of energy. the energy that went into it. That's correct. Gotcha. Right. So, that, so a, okay. a, 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 you draw a sphere around all the Man, action. I'm, somebody get me some weed. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I should be high right now, man. <laughs> so then you could talk about sort of entropy moving. Right. You know, without having to. To inventory the shape of the exactly. DNA molecule, right? Because the the DNA molecule is a result of, of the it energy was taking that, energy it was from, from another the, system, from another Correct. source that put it in that made Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Though. I mean, it is. It's it's so fascinating that this work on, on black holes, black hole information paradox, mm -hmm. emergent space time. Yes. But it's it's such a early stage that I don't think there are popular articles that really, you know, the language isn't there yet. It's right. just mathematically it's mathematics, difficult. Yeah. Wow, man. Thank you.